Hi, welcome to our virtual orientation of our 145RB J Flight SLX by Jayco. We're going to start the orientation on the outside of the RV and we're going to begin near the front. First thing that I'll show you is your outside storage. And what these storage doors hold is that it's magnetic, nice and easy. And we'll find in here, you can find a couple different things. We have your crank for your manual stabilization jacks. On the smaller units, they're only included on the rear of the RV. And I'll show them to you in a moment. This is also where you can find uh, the wheel here. It was on the front and I took it off so we could show you. And it goes right here. What this does, due to the size of it, if you have it on a floor in your garage or something, you can actually roll it around fairly easily. It takes some effort, but you can roll it around and move it. Uh, it's just much easier than having to trailer it everywhere. I mean, same can be said if you have a, a paved or cement driveway. You should, however, now that we're talking about this, uh, it should never transport with that wheel on. Always take it off. Okay, as we continue along to the front, We'll pause for a minute at your side marker light here. Now this side marker light might look a little different than uh, some ones you're used to seeing. It's a little thicker. The reason for that is the uh, two front side marker lights are pre-wired for the rear view cameras. So this is actually a camera body. Once you take this apart, you place the camera in here and then this goes back in and it will give you a side view of the RV while you're driving. There is also one on the opposite side at the front and we have the one at the back as well. All of the cameras can be viewed from one single head and that head unit can be viewed from the inside of your vehicle while you're driving. As we continue along the front we'll see that we have your battery storage. In this case this this particular customer as this is a sold unit requested uh, two six volt batteries as they are using it in conjunction with a uh, solar panel that they ordered and came pre-installed from the factory so we have done this for them specifically normally there would be one 124 volt battery on there so in this case we have the two six volt there's also another difference here is this would normally come with the 20 pound single bottle and this one they requested a, a 30 pound bottle on the front so a little bit of a difference but other than that this is how it would be set up the difference would just be 20 pound bottle and 120 volt battery so we'll continue along and the next thing we'll make note of is your safety breakaway switch now this safety breakaway switch when attached to your tow vehicle by this loop uh, in the event that the tow vehicle is separated from the rv this pin will be pulled out. The brakes of the trailer will be engaged. Uh, also, you might notice when you hook up and you go to drive, if you feel like the brakes are engaged, I would come back here, take a look, and just make sure. I have seen it where you get just a little bit of a pull on this and it's enough whether you trip on it or kind of step on it. And uh, it pulls the pin, but not all the way out, but just enough to engage the brakes. We'll continue along the outside. There is the off-door marker light with the camera body that I mentioned previously. Also on this side of the RV, we have your fill point for your potable water. So what that means is if you're going to go camping and you're not going to be anywhere where there would be a, basically a water hose that you could connect to here, then we want to, through this inlet, Put your garden hose in there and fill up your freshwater tank. You'll be able to tell it's full by using the indicator panel on the inside of the trailer. However, if you do overfill it, there is an overflow kind of safety system in that it will overfill but come out of the RV down uh, low point drains and exit safely. And as we talked about briefly, we have your city water connection. If you are camping at a campground or you're going to set it up at your, your home and you wish to have water connected, this is where you would uh, connect your garden hose. And once you turn the water on at your tap or garden hose of your house or campground, 
you will then pressurize the water system in the RV and you can use it much like you would your water system at home. Right next door to the city water connection is where we'll find the outside access to your hot water heater. This operates on gas and electric. A couple things uh, worth noting here, your drain and drain plug, or in this case, a cap, and the pressure relief valve. Always make sure your pressure relief valve is open before you remove this cap, as there is a lot of pressure built up in the system and it will shoot out at you like a rocket. And next, we'll take a quick look at your 30 amp power connection point for your RV. This is where you open this door, you'll find your 30 amp plug in that you can connect either at the campground receptacle or at home. Most of us at home do not have a 30 amp plug in on the outside of our home. So we've also provided you with the block that will convert your 30 amp plug in to a 15 amp plug in. Therefore, you can plug in it at home and still use a bit of power to power the fridge and stuff. Next, we'll come to the venting for your refrigerator. It's important that the venting remains free of obstruction at all times as airflow is needed for proper functioning of your refrigerator. As we move further along to the back, we'll make note of the main input for the cable or satellite into the RV and the exhaust for your furnace. It does say hot right on there, but it does get pretty warm, so don't touch that while you're running the furnace. As we look down here, you'll find that we have the output for your black and gray water tanks, as well as your valve handles for the black and gray water tanks. It is here that you would open or close the valves in order to allow any water, gray water, any liquids whatsoever that are built up in your tanks. So we come around back, you'll see that uh, it actually mentioned that there was a camera body in the back for a rear view camera. Uh, that was my mistake. This one doesn't actually have it. If it did, it would be located here. So this particular RV does not have the rear view camera. It is, however, set up for the side view cameras. So continue the rest of the way along the outside of the RV. The last thing I want to note before we go in would be your speakers and the head of the awning at either end. And we'll also note the LED awning light underneath your awning. Let's go in and take a look and see what we have. We'll turn back around towards the door and look down. This is where you'll find the fire extinguisher for the RV. I like the placement just inside the door. That way it is readily accessible if you're cooking inside the RV or if you're using a barbecue outside. We will notice we have the main switching for the inside lights of the RV as well as the awning light. And then we also have the controls to move your awning in and out or retract and extend. And we'll take a look at your thermostat. This is straightforward. This only operates the furnace. Move it till it clicks. We just heard a click. The fan will turn on. Apologize for the fan noise. Hopefully it's not too loud for me to talk over for you. But you just push it over until you hear it click on. That'll indicate it's gonna light, but basically you just slide this dial over, that will turn it on and that will increase or decrease the heat as well. We'll take a little look at your bathroom. Has a nice skylight. Makes it nice and bright in here even with the lights off. And as we come back out to the main part of the RV, we'll take a look at your stove top. Now this stove top is, can be lit by turning this to the light position. And while in the light position, you would use your barbecue lighter, hold it near the uh, flame and it will light the appliance for you. The same can be said for the second burner as well. As we continue along the counter here, I'll show you what I spoke of earlier, that we have the conversion block that you would put on your 30 amp plug end 
in order to utilize your uh, power cord in a 15 amp receptacle. So this particular uh, unit does not come with a TV included. It does however include an option of placement inside the RV. It has your cable output as well as your signal booster for your antenna. Uh, one thing to note about this, when this is turned on, and if you're attempting to use cable or satellite, it uh, could interfere with your signal. So if you're attempting to connect to satellite or cable and uh, you're having signal issues, make sure you take a look and that this button isn't turned on or that the booster is not turned on. And we'll take a look at our indication panels. This is where you would See your battery level, your fresh or black, and gray water tank levels. Now I've mentioned before that if you're filling your fresh water tank, you can come in here to get an idea of where the uh, tank fill is at. So it doesn't overflow on you. However, like I said, if it does, it's not the end of the world as there is an overflow mechanism built in so that it's not a huge problem. Underneath the uh, indication panel, we also have switching for your water pump, your water heater on gas, and your water heater on electric. To the right, we will see the unit GFCI plug. When this is connected to 120 volt power, there will be a light that comes on here. If this is tripped, I'm running off a of battery at the moment, so you won't see that. But if this were tripped, this red light would be on. If this was tripped, some symptoms could be the plug in the bathroom may not operate properly, the plug outside under the awning would most likely not operate, anything near water or anything outside. It's a pretty safe bet it'll be on the load side of the GFCI, so it, it may not work if this is tripped. So if you're having any of those issues, come in here, take a look. If you see that red light on, press this top black button to reset it, and uh, you should be good to go. Now, as you can see here, this dining room table is a little bit of a different setup in that you can remove the table completely. I kind of like that. You can use it outside, you can use it inside, you can fold it up and just get it out of the way altogether. Okay, I'm going to ask you to bear with me here. I'm going to show you the water pump and the inside access to the hot water tank. So, the off door side, bench seating. I removed the pads, the wooden bench part, and now we can take a look in. Ignore all the spaghetti mess of the, the wires behind your load center, which I'll get to in a moment. And we'll take a look at your hot water heater. So your hot water heater, what we want to look at here is this valve here and this valve here. Currently, this is in winterizing mode as these valves are turned so that the water will flow through this loop and then continue on through the system and bypass the hot water tank. You do that when you're winterizing as you can use the drain plug of the hot water tank to drain it. Therefore, you do not need to fill it full of antifreeze. Now, if we wish to use your hot water tank, as you would, you would turn both valves, they point into the hot water tank itself. That indicates that it is set up to put water into the tank and draw water out. And that's how you would use it in, in normal daily camping. Now right beside here we have your water pump. This is what you would use to fill your fresh water tank, which you can see here. And when I showed you before that there was an overflow, you can see that here. If the tank gets full, it'll force it out up, up into this tube and then down out of the trailer. So on the water pump, there is a similar valve that I showed you on the hot water tank there. That valve right now is currently pointing in line with that clear tube right here, which if we follow it all the way around, comes to an end such as this. This is a fill tube that you can use to draw antifreeze out of your antifreeze jug in order to winterize your RV. I'm not going to go into all the details of winterizing, but just to tell you that if you're wanting to draw from the fresh water tank here, as opposed to the fill tube, you will have to change the position of that valve 
and now it is currently set up to draw from your freshwater tank. So we stand up and pull back a little bit. I want you to notice your emergency exit. You can utilize the emergency exit. Push the red handle over and out. Bring the handle perpendicular to the window or the sidewall of the trailer. Push it all the way out until it is fully outside of the window. Then you may pull on the red tab and escape to safety. Next, I want to talk to you about your refrigerator. It has a little freezer in it. However, the important part is you can run this off of three different, uh, basically run this in three different ways. We can run it off the battery, we can run it off gas, or we can run it off electric. Uh, currently it's set up to run off gas, and if you wish to light it on gas, there's a little bit of a protocol that you have to do. This button is supposed to clear air from the line, and then you can press this button at the same time. So basically press this one, and then press and hold this one, and you will hear that sparking. And as you do it, and it can take a while, but as you do it, you'll see there's a little orange indicator line. And as it starts to light, it'll start moving and moving and moving until it gets all the way over to the green position. And once that happens, you can let go of both buttons and the refrigerator will be lit. Obviously, that's a pretty abridged version of how the fridge works. There is a more detailed description of how to light it in the manual that is included. And as I stand up, that manual will be located in this bag of goodies here that has uh, all the pertinent manuals and information that you would need. Now that we're up, we'll move over slightly in order to take a look at your air conditioner. This is a wall air conditioner or window type air conditioner. It operates with an on off switch. You can control the unit by having just the fan run. You can have it on cool uh, air conditioning, obviously. You can run the fan on uh, auto, low, medium, or high. There's also an energy saver function, as well as a timer so that you can uh, have it shut off automatically for you. So next thing we're going to turn and we'll take a look at the head of your solar power unit. Now this head unit is connected with the batteries out front that is also connected with the provided solar panels on the roof and it will indicate your battery levels and you can switch between amps and amp hours so 2.1 amp hours 12.8 volts they're not fully charged obviously as you can see but it does also have a light indicating charge level Just like your refrigerator, if you require any more information for the system, then you can locate that in that blue bag that I showed you previously. This basically just gives you a way to monitor your battery power and battery levels and to make sure it is charging appropriately. As you can see by the indication lights, it would indicate that it is putting out power, but it would also indicate that it is charging as well. So we'll move over to your radio for the RV. This can operate via Bluetooth, an auxiliary, HDMI, and it also has a USB charging capability. Uh, we can also operate this in two zones, zone one being inside the trailer and zone two being outside of the trailer and the speakers on either end of the awning that I showed you previously. Now before we conclude our tour, I would like to take a moment to point out your smoke detector right here there's a button on the front that you can use to test your smoke detector to make sure it is working properly however i usually suggest every six months daylight savings time it is best just to go ahead change the batteries now that way you're always sure that it is functioning properly and i would usually suggest you test that or change those batteries at the same time as you test this. Uh, this is your carbon monoxide propane detector. Uh, what it will do is it'll let you know if any of the allowable limits for either carbon monoxide or propane are met. That would mean it wouldn't be safe to be inside the RV. 
so it would sound an alarm. There is a button on the front. You can press that. It will offer up a series of loud beeps. This light will turn red. And once it's all done, if the system is functioning properly, it will turn back to a solid green color like this. So right now our system is operating as it should. I would suggest testing this every six months when you change the battery on your smoke detector. An easiest way to remember is daylight savings time. Okay, last but not least, I'd like to point out your load center. This load center is where you'll find your breakers that you might find in your home and they operate pretty much the same. And you have your fuses like you might find in your vehicle. And for these, you will also note that there is a red LED light that will light up when one of these fuses are not operating properly. Well, that does it for our virtual orientation. I hope you found it informative. If there's something that you wanted more information on and I didn't cover it, if you call into Christie's, we'd be happy to answer all of your questions and help you out in any way that we can. Thank you.